Well, hello, Joe, what's happening? Hey guys, Adam here, Bruce Strategist. Welcome to today's Lunchtime Live. Sounds like with the chat and Joe's comment that this is gonna be a highly requested video. So what I'm gonna be covering today, I, I have one email I printed out this came through and a few emails, but this is what we'll be covering. There we go. So thank you to Ryan, by the way. Ryan says, hey, in the past week, um, each, a customer wanting to hold their check or not go through with the work after receiving the money and signing a contingency. Do you have any suggestions on how to handle that or how to avoid that from happening? This, my friends, is a common thing that when I teach you, what I teach you today is really going to help, uh, one, keep this from happening, and two, if it does happen, help you overcome it. Before we jump into that, I want to just tease to two things. First, stick around at the end of the video because I'm going to be uh, sharing information on what's actually coming next and what I'm releasing. I've been kind of hinting at this. I'm ready to actually share details. I'll do that at the end of the video. Second, I wanted to share one win from the community. This is just a testament here. This is an email from David, um, and it has something to do with what Jason shared way long ago about taping those letters. So he's using the battle pack, my battle pack, and instead of mailing the letters during the COVID times, he was taping them on doors. So just a quick win to share the power of community and us coming together. David says, hey, Adam, David here. I was just out hanging some letters on doors. Within five minutes of me walking away, my phone rang. Customer calling, I asked myself. Sure enough, he called, did the inspection, and signed him using your strategy. He was very excited about the way I do business. Guys, this is so, like that feedback right there, he was excited about the way I do business. That means we're doing it right. I love it. And he says, um, I give all the, all the thanks to you. And I responded saying, this isn't thanks to me. Of course, like I'm helping put this stuff together. But ultimately, what makes this community thrive is us sharing what's working. So this was a, a combination of my material and then a member of, of the insiders, Jason, adapting that material and saying, hey, instead of mailing him, I can't knock because of COVID, he taped him. David used it. He got a call in five minutes. Just awesome. And again, most importantly, the customer was happy. So with that in mind, let's roll right into this because it is all about making customers happy and delivering good service that we feel comfortable with, that we can stand behind and makes people happy. So, um, and Sean, um, love to have you there. Happy to help. Uh, there's links in the description. And um, if anyone needs any payment assistance, I just set up a plan to help out with that. You can email me personally, adam at roofstrategist.com. Let's jump in. All right. So if you got a roof approved, but the customer wants to keep the cash, what do you do? How do you handle this? So I want to cover a few things. First, your legal recourse. Okay. First is legal. You know what? I'm realizing that this blue doesn't look so good. I just ordered some new colors, but you know how Amazon is right now. So first is legal. This is your contingency. Second is the reality of the situation, which I'm going to just write education. Okay. And then third is urgency. All right, let's jump right into this. Legal. If a homeowner wants to keep the cash, you know that on your contingency agreement, one of the reasons that it's so important to use the contingency is to have that cancellation information on there. Every state is different. Okay. Every state will adjust what percentage you can charge. You need to check with your state laws. On our contingency, we did have a fee for cancellation or going with another contract, excuse me, another contractor. And um, you can let homeowners know that you went to bat. So again, if you didn't sign any contingency up front, you're kind of out of luck, guys. That's where it comes into the education urgency, which I'm going to touch on next. But ultimately, you need to have this in place to protect yourself. And it's important when, when Ryan said, he said, um, do you have any suggestions on how to handle that or how to avoid it happening? You need to do it out of the gate. And here's one way. Okay, on the contingency, in addition to the legal side, you say, listen, Mr. and Mrs. Homeowner, there's a lot of legwork that goes into meeting with the insurance company, getting your roof approved, and then supplementing and assessing the damage to make sure it's compensated for fully and wholly. And we do not bill for that work. The only way that we get paid is by becoming the contractor of choice to do the actual work. Does that make sense? So you want to showcase and have them see the value. Okay. The other thing is say, you know, you go through the contingency. This is in the fine print. If you decide to go elsewhere, there is a, um, a small fee for the work that we did. Because again, the only way we get paid for that is by actually doing the work. So if we don't do the work, we end up investing a tremendous amount of time and resources and financial capital into, into making this happen. So that's how you prevent it on the front side is letting them know you do not bill for this. And this is the value it brings. The only way you get paid is by doing the work. So that's the preventative side, okay? And the legal side. And by the way, Jason, so glad you're here. Jason in the chat uh, is the one that, that recommended the taping uh, the letters on the door. 
the power of community. So um, yes, great job, J uh, D uh, Jason. Thank you a ton for contributing and Mildred, hello, hello. All right, so that's the legal side. Now let's talk education. So what happens if someone doesn't do the work? This is what most people don't realize. Most homeowners don't realize because everybody thinks that their home is like their car, okay? So everybody thinks their home is just like their automobile. It's a bus, truck, I don't know. <laughs> and people are used to these kind of claims where they're like, hey, so-and-so backed into me, crunched the bumper. I'm just going to keep, keep the cash. I don't care about the, the scratch, the crack, whatever it is. On a house, it's different. Here's how it's different. When the roof is damaged, there's your boo-boo. There's your hail damage, right? Boom, 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 boom. Now, the insurance company is obviously paying that actual cash value up front. That is the value of the home. This, by the way, is how you educate homeowners. This is the value of what that roof is worth today. Car analogy. If you ever drive in a 2012 um, Honda Civic, they're going to pay to replace a 2012 Honda Civic, not a brand new one. Now, the RCV is going to cover the difference between the 2012 Honda Civic and then the brand new Civic. So um, this... this uh, difference here is only paid when the when the work is done and paid in full. But in the insurance company's mind, once they pay this initial check, their hands are washed. They uh, 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 stood behind their obligation to pay the pay the the claim out in a, in their mind it's been paid. It is no longer insured until this work is done because they paid it once. Okay? Follow this. Listen, if they pay that claim, and this has happened to me, I have been on a roof with a homeowner, slam dunk deal, torched roof with hail. And I meet with the adjuster and he goes, man, tons of damage up there. He gets down to his truck. He's about to write it up. He goes, Adam, come on over here. So I walk to the adjuster's truck with him. He pulls out his laptop and he says, take a look at these pictures. Same roof vents, same shingle color. See the date here? This is the claim file from a storm two years ago. We already paid this claim. They never did the work. They just filed another claim. So what that means is a roof is literally no longer insured. They pocketed the cash. They cannot make another claim, okay? Because it was already paid out. You cannot collect on the same damaged piece of property twice. It'd be like saying I lost my gold watch and then you lost it again before you even bought a new one. It's not possible. They will not do it. When that claim is paid one time, it is no longer insured unless you do the work. Once you do the work and they pay that RCV, the roof will then be insured again. But until that point, it's not. So if that homeowner who filed the claim for the second round of storm damage, let's just say was severe wind, rips the roof off, flooding in the home, massive disaster, okay? Or a tornado comes through or a hurricane comes through or a tree falls on it, that roof has already been paid for. It is no longer insured. This education piece, man, there's a lot of, a lot of things going on, um, is really important because, now listen, fear is a powerful motivator and it is overused in a very manipulative way in the sales world, in my opinion. I do believe that education that results in some people feeling a little bit of fear can be a strong motivator when it is actually in their best interest. This is the difference between manipulative quote unquote, persuasive tactics versus actual educational sales, all right? So if I said to you, for example, and no offense to anyone here, all right, I'm just gonna use smoking as an example. If someone said to you, smoking causes cancer and can hurt you, that is fear for your best interest. Do you see the difference, okay? Versus me saying, if you don't get this roof today and you know there's a massive flood and the sky opens up and a hurricane comes and destroys your house like that that can be manipulative right but there's a difference between like factual education versus fear and coercion okay you see the difference factual information and coercion so when i say fear i just needed that disclaimer because i don't want anyone to start using this stuff the wrong way fear is 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 a powerful motivator the reality is this um your roof is no longer insured okay this is huge. Some people say, hey, well, I got that check for 10 grand and it could go to the college fund. It could pay the bills. It could buy the boat, whatever it is. I've had this happen. But ultimately, the roof is no longer insured if it was already paid out and the work is not done. So when you educate a homeowner 
and say, listen, I understand this is your choice, but there's two things that I want to bring to your attention that may influence how you decide to move forward. Number one is we do have a, an obligation because through our contingency agreement and the reason to do this and not handshake deals, we will um, have to bill you for the time, which is equivalent to usually it's a percentage, X percent of the claim, five to 10%. Okay. Second, if you decide to not do the work, I just want you to, to understand everything. Your roof is no longer insured. If a tree comes or a tree falls on it, if there's wind damage, if there's another hail storm or if a tornado or a hurricane comes through, all of this stuff is documented. They will not pay on it twice. I have, and you can share my story. You can share your own stories if you've seen this happen, but ultimately your roof's no longer insured. Okay. So if you're comfortable taking on that liability, the minute it happens, you're going to owe for it. But instead of that initial check, let's say it's a, a a $14,000 roof and they got paid, let's just say 8,000. So what you're, they're essentially doing, so is it, run the numbers for them. So you were paid 8,000, your roof's worth 14. So you're gonna take this money, your roof's no longer insured, but you are now self-insuring your roof if anything ever happens again for $14,000 plus the roofing costs go up every single year. And material material with the with the price of fuel, which I know fuel's down right now, um, or oil's down right now, but but the, usually shingle prices will go up three to 5% a year. So does labor, everything gets higher. So they're taking on this liability. So that education piece is really, really important. All right, so that's how I handle this on this side. Now, the other piece is driving urgency. Why do they want to handle this right now? Their urgency is a reason to get people to take action. Why should someone sign with you now? Why should they do the roof today and not wait? You need to have an answer for that. And again, ultimately everything that I believe in, and I know that this is controversial. I know I'm not everybody's style in the industry and that's okay. I'm, I truthful, truly believe that we are in a position of service to help people get their homes put back together. Of course, we are going to get paid very well for doing it. When you educate people on their, on, on the reality of their situation, you're facilitating a process. And if you explain that, what is the reason for you to act now? Why should you do this now instead of wait? Here's why. Okay. Number one, your timeline, which this varies. I was just on poking through a Facebook group on uh, one of the roofing ones talking about sales. Someone said, Hey, I got a roof that the adjuster came out. It was six months in. He says, you can't, uh, the, the, the date to file the claim from data loss is too, too long. It's expired. And I've seen everything from six months to three years, okay? Every state is different. Every insurance company is different. You need to know the timeline to get the work done. I personally worked a storm that a hailstorm came at the end of the season, okay? I think it was like September or October, if my memory serves, right coming into winter. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So by the time we got all that, those claims handled, <clears throat> we ended up doing a lot of carryover in the following season. People dragged their feet. Well, then at the end of the season, we started to have to file for extensions from the insurance company because they only allowed one year. And some of them were real sticklers. So you want to use urgency to get it done right now. It's really, really important. Say, listen, there is a limit on when this can get done and when the insurance company will release funds. We do not want to take this all the way to the last minute because our options run out. And obviously, during this limbo time, when you file that claim, it's in your best interest to get this job done right away because in limbo, until that job is done, the roof's no longer insured. They've already made a commitment to pay for it. We got to get the job done. All right. So I'm hoping that this information, I'm going to do a quick recap, will help you overcome what Ryan dealt with, which is the customers wanting to hold their check or not go through with the work after receiving the money and signing a contingency. Educate up front. Use that contingency agreement. If you need a refresher, watch my videos on how to use the contingency agreement as a sales tool. I also have a cheat sheet in the battle pack for that, by the way. Um, and don't do, and I also have a sample contingency, by the way, as well. Um, educate them on the fact their roof's no longer insured and they're taking on a tremendous financial risk. Tremendous financial risk, okay? And then the last piece is urgency. Get them to act now, all right? Um, and I agree, Jeremy says, you don't give them too much time to think about it either. So, um, yes, and Jeremy also mentioned, I'm looking at the chat. By the way, David, welcome. I, I just read the... Uh, one of the emails you sent me. Um, and then Jeremy says, they only pay half up front anyway. So the second check should have the company's name on it. And if they want that, um, he can pay the 20% cancellation fee they signed in the agreement. And again, every state's different. So, if, um, but yes, there is the cancellation fee. So use these tips and it will keep you from having homeowners try to keep that cash because it's truthfully not in their best interest. They're making a huge, huge risk, huge risk to uh, to do that. So um, promised couple things. I'm going to be sharing some details of what's coming next. I have some exciting updates and everything um, is, everything that I'm sharing has been requested from 
you guys and gals who are here. So first of all, I want to say thank you. I also want to share just to, I feel a really big milestone. I feel like it wasn't long ago that we celebrated 3000 members and 3,500 subscribers, excuse me, not members, subscribers and broke 4,000 and it's been growing. So thank you guys. So here's what's coming. Thanks to you. First battle pack expansion. I have been getting requests for wind damage letters, three tab shingles, discontinued shingles, and other letters to set in a series to open up a storm. So what I'm releasing, part of the battle pack, in addition to additional emails, to including um, some additional information that I added for the COVID pack, specifically for realtors, I'm now including uh, or I'm adding to that in the actual battle pack. So realtors, additional direct mail letters, three tab, commercial, wind damage, letters to introduce yourself to property management companies, a commercial letter, um, along with a library of other things that are coming. Okay, so that's first thing, battle pack, updates and expansion. If there's anything, battle pack updates, if there's anything that you guys want to see that I haven't included, email me. If there's enough interest, it goes in there. Okay, email adam at roofstrategist.com or drop a comment on the video. Either way works. So the battle pack updates are coming. Second thing that's coming. This has been highly requested. Retail. I am releasing a retail version of the battle pack and you will start to see more information on retail videos coming soon. Usually even emailed just to give you a hint of what's coming. He says, hey, I'm encountering a lot of retail sales right now because with COVID-19, it's been a slower season than usual, especially in the metro area. Um, that being said, he's already sold a quarter million this year, he said, with his goal being a million, which I imagine he'll reach if, if it's this uh, this time of the year. Um, so anyway, he he Josh has asked, like, do you have any recommendations on... Um, any tips for selling retail? So I'm going to be doing a lot more on the, on the retail sales process as well. So the other thing, um, so retail battle pack is coming soon. If you want to see anything specific, let me know. Drop it in the, in the uh, comments. Email me. This is coming. The battle pack updates are coming. And then I'll be doing more videos on retail sales. I have an entire library already bulleted out from suggestions. So if you have any suggestions, if you're fixing retail, let me know. I will uh, put it on the list for some videos. The last thing I want to share with you is this. I am um, working on another video on retail and hail and how sometimes you might get a retail lead and how it can be flipped to hail or hail gets an item can be flipped to, uh, to retail. So uh, Jack says, uh, definitely interested in retail. And Jason says, do you have a personal thank you letter for customers who did business with? No, but I'm going to write that on here so I don't forget. Thank you. Thank you for the thank you. Um, that's funny. Those are super, super powerful and super important. And I will add that. It's a great suggestion. So the retail side's coming. Uh, if you guys have any suggestions, I just wanted to share with you kind of what's coming. I'm going to be doing retail. Um, again, flipping retail to hail and hail to retail. I'm going to be doing the why you need pricing tiers with retail, the three step pricing tiers, the psychology of pricing. I'm going to give uh, the negotiation tactics. I'm going to do a video on price versus cost. So when you're at the door, I'm doing a video on um, using analogies and price anchoring tactics to help compete when you're going cash bid competing with people, right? So how that's a big question. How do you compete on a cash basis? So I'm doing videos on how to compete on a cash basis, as well as how to do a one call close without being pushy. This is really important that you show up to these appointments ready to go to present, to have your measurements and be able to put that estimate together. So go through a lot of strategies to help you along with identifying the right homes, using letters to generate leads and how to get people to take action now on their roof as opposed to waiting. Again, you'll see a lot of car analogies. So that's what's coming. And um, uh, yeah, guys, thanks for being here. And shoot those suggestions over. The last thing, I will be on a rolling monthly basis. Um, my team grew a little bit, so I've got some more help to, to keep up. Um, and what we'll be doing is taking that master video list that I just saw someone request, that will be updated and sent monthly. So all the videos that I'm doing now, you can email me to get early access to it. It's a PDF file that you click, you, it links right to all the videos and, and categories that you want. And all that will be coming 
monthly basis if you're on the insiders list. So you can click to join that. There's a link in the description. Just go to roofstrategist.com, the root, excuse me, the roofstrategist.com. You can opt in for free and that will uh, be added shortly. So a lot of cool stuff coming. And again, a, a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart to all of you guys and gals that are joining live, that are watching the replay and they're helping make this happen. Everything I'm doing is directly in response to what is helping the most. So this retail piece, it's been in my back pocket. I didn't realize the growing demand. And I'm super pumped that it's just been like nonstop chirping. And I'm like, you know what? We're going to make this happen. So great stuff coming. Thank you for the suggestions. Email me anytime. I do respond personally. It may take me one to two days, but no more than that. Um, Adam at roofstrategist.com. Join the insiders if you haven't already. Uh, it's free. And if you're already a, a, a customer um, or you're already on the email list, you're good. Um, happy to be here. Thank you all. Have a good one. Lives jumping right into some retail stuff. So awesome. Thanks guys.